Welcome back to the Band Guide, where we use GarageBand to create professional sounding music. I'm your band guy, Colin, and this is another video in the Ultimate GarageBand Beginner's Guide video series. This video series is walking through everything from the first time you open up GarageBand until you're exporting out your finished, mixed, and mastered song. In fact, we're recording, mixing, and mastering a song together throughout this video series, which is why we're recording acoustic guitar today. So before we even get into today's video all about recording acoustic guitar in GarageBand, I want to give you something in addition to this video series. I put together the Ultimate GarageBand band guide. This guide walks through mixing, recording, mastering, gear you need, all the shortcuts. It's really everything inside GarageBand and it's completely free from the link in the description below. So be sure to pick it up. But let's go and get into today's video where we're recording acoustic guitar. So obviously we see I have acoustic guitar in front of me. I always caveat these videos at the beginning that I am primarily a drummer but I do play a little bit of guitar. So we're going to fumble our way through this together today. But I've recorded a lot of guitars over the years, especially acoustic guitars. So I can definitely teach you something about recording them I just can't play them particularly well myself. Now when it comes to getting a great acoustic guitar recording there's three main elements. The first is your mic placement. Where your microphone is relative to the acoustic guitar really really matters in determining how your acoustic recording is going to sound. If it's over here it's going to sound very different than if your microphone's over here. So we're going to talk about that first. The second is recording at the right volume because if you record too loud you're just going to lose the top of that signal. Your computer doesn't know what to do with it. It just digitally cuts it off which distorts and sounds bad and you can't get it back. You just lose it. So it's really important that you record at the right volume. You don't record too loud. And then finally, the third is getting a great take or recording. Now, this means being super in tune, not being just a little bit out of tune, being really in tune, being really in time so that you're really locked in with the timing of all the other elements in the recording, and then getting the right performance in the way that you want to play it. A little bit obvious, but it's worth saying. Okay, so let's go ahead and start talking about part one, which is your mic placement. So when it comes to mic placements, there's a lot of ways that you can mic up an acoustic guitar but there's one that's kind of the tried and true that most engineers are going to at least start with in their studios and that's for the microphone to be directly in front of the 12th fret 12th fret microphone's directly in front of it and it's pointed at either where the fretboard meets the body or at the sound hole over here so in front of the 12th fret usually about a foot away pointing at where the fretboard meets the body or at the sound hole. If you're at the fretboard, it's gonna have a little less low end. As you start to move towards the sound hole, you're gonna get a little bit more low end and body out of it. So it just depends on what you're going for in your recording. And then you can move it a little bit more towards the sound hole if you want even more low end and a little bit away from the sound hole if you want even less. So playing around with that mic positioning, just kind of in this range, is where you're gonna find that sweet spot. And just test it out, try two or three different positions, record a snippet, and then just pick whichever is your favorite and go with it. Don't spend forever obsessing about it, but playing around with it and finding that sweet spot for you is gonna go a long way. Now, you might be thinking, well, why can't I just take the direct output out of my acoustic guitar? Well, if you haven't tried that yet, you might not have realized that never sounds as realistic as an actual microphone in front of the acoustics. The pickups that are in the guitar are great if you're recording like a full band or you're playing live, but but it really loses something of the total nature of the acoustic guitar. So if you want a really realistic acoustic guitar recording, recording with a microphone is going to get you there a lot faster and a lot further than trying to do anything with the DI. It never quite comes out the same. That doesn't mean you can't do cool things with the DI, but in terms of getting a really good straight up acoustic guitar recording, I strongly recommend you start with the microphone. Okay, so let's actually listen to a couple of these different positions so you can hear how they sound relative to each other. So starting with just straight up, we're in front of the 12th fret, about a foot away, and we're pointing right now at where the fretboard meets the body of the guitar. Right, pretty straightforward, pretty balanced. If I were to turn this more towards the sound hole here, Listen to this. A little bit more low end, a little bit more body. If I just turn a little bit here, so now we're really pointing at the sound hole and we're closer to the sound hole, listen to this. Right? And then the opposite, let's say I turn a little bit this way and we also turn it back a little bit. So now we're a little bit past the 12th fret and we're pointing maybe around the 12th fret. Check it out. Mm -hmm. 
right? Okay, so those are the miking options that you have. I would play around with that and find where it feels best to you for your goals and your song. So for example, in this song, where it's kind of a full-ish rock song, and so we want this acoustic guitar to be a little bit thinner. I don't need a lot of body coming from this. I want a little bit of warmth out of it, so I don't want to lose it all together, but aiming around this fretboard where the fretboard meets the body is a good option for me with this song. So that's number one, is pick your mic position. I would just try two or three record little snippets and then just pick your favorite and roll with it. Don't spend forever obsessing about it. Okay, let's talk about part two, which is recording at the right volume. This is really, really important because if you record too loud, it's just gonna get cut off. So first, since we're recording something in the real world, we'll need to create an audio track. So when you create that, it will look like this. And you need to, under your recording settings here, make sure that you have the right input selected. I've already created one here. So we'll just go with the one that I've created for this track. So once you've made sure that your recording settings are right, you're coming into the right input here and that you only see one circle right there. Then under your plugins, if you're not seeing these, you can just click here to drop them down. You need to bring up the MV Meter 2. This is a plugin that we talked about earlier in the series to make sure that you're recording at the right volume. This is what's called a meter plugin. GarageBand is great, but it doesn't have accurate metering built into it. So it's really hard to tell exactly how loud it is that you're recording. And so what this plugin allows us to do is see if we change this here to peak. So if you just click on the words right there, you can just change it between which ones you need. Change it to peak. Then we can see the loudest part of our recorded volume. So if I turn on monitor in here, now, I can easily see that I never went past negative 2.6. Zero on your peak meter is when your computer just goes, I don't know what to do with this, and just cuts it off. And so staying below that is key. That's number number one. Beyond that, I aim generally between negative 10 to negative 6, but I'm okay if I get a little bit beyond that as long as I'm safely well below zero, right? Now... You also don't want to record too quiet because then you won't really see your audio waveforms here. So the other thing I always check is the VU meter. VU meters were kind of designed to get us in the sweet spot of the recording volume. It's recording over a short average of time, about 300 milliseconds, which is how our ears actually perceive sound a little bit better. And zero here is calibrated to negative 18. So what I aim for on a VU meter is for this to be hovering right around zero. So it's okay, totally fine that I'm going past zero here. I'm hitting 4.4, which is fine because zero here is negative 18. So I'm actually looking to be just below and just above zero on this meter. So peak is most important, making sure that you're not peaking. And then after that, I check my VU meter because if I'm way down here around 20 or 10, I wanna bring it up some, right? So these two things will get you at your optimal recording volume. Don't stress too much about this, just play around with it and make sure that you're somewhere safely within those ranges. It's never gonna be perfectly always right at the exact volume that it should be, but staying in this range is all that you should be looking for here. Okay, so now that we've set our input volume, if you're too loud, you just turn down your interface. If it's too, you're too quiet, you just turn it up on your interface. Now it's time to start actually recording, which is part three, getting a great take. Now, when it comes to getting a great take, first and foremost, you need to be in tune. So this is where this built-in tuner built into GarageBand is so helpful because we can just regularly check our tuning and make sure that we're at a solid tuning. I highly recommend that you keep up on this because if you're just a little bit out of tune as you start to stack multiple elements, it's gonna sound really wonky. So staying in tune is really, really important. And then when it comes to recording, you wanna be really, really locked in on your timing. So I highly recommend you turn on your metronome, even if you have drums, I still recommend you have your metronome on, just so you have something always emphasizing that beat. And then after that, it's just a matter of recording. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of recording for this song. Now this song is only gonna have acoustic in the intro and then in the final chorus. So we're just gonna go between those two parts and I'm gonna record one track for the left ear and one track for the right ear. Okay, let's get into it. Now, one final thing is pay attention to how you're sitting, making sure that you're not angling, changing your angle too much because that's gonna change the microphone position if the guitar changes relative to it. So just keep that in mind. Try to stay in one place as much as possible. The last thing is make sure you're not bumping anything while you're recording because this is a microphone it's going to pick that up so for example i can hit the edge of this chair here and i don't want that in my recording so you got to pay attention to all those little things in a way you don't necessarily have to when you're recording electric guitar bass guitar just with a quarter inch right a microphone hears everything okay let's go and get into it Cool. 
Okay, so that's one side. Instead of doing both sections here, let's just do both sides. And I'll show you between the left and the right what I'm really going for and what I'm listening for as I'm recording these uh, to make sure that I'm getting the performances that I want. Okay, so we're on the right side now. I'm going to bring this volume back down a little bit too. Let's go for it. Let's listen to those. Turn these off here. So let's start by listening to them in the context of the song. We're just going to focus on this main intro section here. And it's worth mentioning, these are meant to be more of a textual element than like a focus highlight of the song. So yeah, these are definitely doing what I want them to do. Now, the key things that I'm checking here is that I'm in time and that I'm playing the same rhythms or at least complementary rhythms between the two sections. So if you establish a strumming pattern, you need to make sure that you're strumming, well, you're always establishing a strumming pattern because if you're doing a strumming pattern, you're establishing that. But if you need to make sure that your strumming pattern is either identical or at least working with the other section. There shouldn't be weird disparities between the two. And if you're not used to recording, you might not realize that you might do slightly different rhythms. In fact, when I was kind of practicing the acoustic, figuring out what part I was going to do for this, I was going back and forth between two different strumming patterns, slight differences, but not realizing that on one, I was doing a few more little Da da pickups than on other ones. And so I had to really pay attention to and identify which one of those am I going to be doing. So you'll see here, we can see visually looking at these waveforms that I, my strumming patterns are really lined up and I'm doing the same strumming pattern between both of these guitars. But let's listen to them in solo here. That's the other thing I always check is just make sure that I can hear it in solo. Cool. Yeah, so th that sounds good to me. That's what I'm going for in terms of the rhythms. I also am checking that I'm relatively in time, right? So especially because acoustic guitars are so rhythmic, if they're just like hesitating a little bit, falling a little bit ahead of or behind the beat, you can really shoot yourself in the foot because you can be really introducing a very rhythmic element. It's almost like a drum in terms of how rhythmic and a big strums on an acoustic guitar can be that's just not really in time. And so, for example, these aren't perfectly in time, which is good. A little not good, but it's fine. A little bit of variation can give a little bit of width, but they're close enough as I'm moving through the beats of the song, I can see that my strums are really happening more or less right on the beat or close enough to the beat that it's not a problem. So if I were like seeing something like this, that would indicate to me that's pretty behind. Like I'm really late on all of these hits on this bottom guitar now compared to this top guitar. So trying to make sure that you're staying in time with the song is really, really important. So use your ears first and foremost, but then also use your eyes if you're trying to identify what exactly the issues are. So that is how you record acoustic guitar. You get the right mic placement. You make sure that you are recording at the right volume so you're not too loud or too quiet. And then you take time to make sure you're getting the right take and that your rhythms are really synced in. You're in time and you're in tune. And if you do all that, you have a great acoustic guitar recording. Okay, before you go, be sure to grab the Ultimate Garage Band guide from the link in the description below. It's really going to help you out. It's completely free. It walks through so much stuff that's going to be helpful to you if you're getting into recording in GarageBand. And I also, as always, would like to hear from you. Do you have any tips for recording acoustic guitar that have been helpful to you up until this point? Or is there anything from this video that's been helpful to you that you're going to implement next time you're recording? Let me know in the comments below. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow with a video where we're starting to get into recording vocals.